I've built a few Gauge 1 live steam locomotives so far. This is the next one I'm going to build and it's going to be scratch built and it's going to be live steam and I hope you find the series of following videos interesting to watch. I'm just doing some um, embossing of the rivets. Uh, you may remember we are talking about doing the plate work and doing the water tanks. Well I've made a start on the plate work and one of the first things I've done is started doing this embossing. And as you can see I've done the sides and I'm now working through on the on the on the, the rear part of the cab. Now you probably may have some of you may have seen me do this in an earlier episode on the running boards where I added the embossing to the running boards and I used I found that the old Cinefilm perforations were just about the right size. Now these are close together so what I did I drew like a matrix and I'm not even sure the camera can pick that up there yeah there it, there it is uh, drew a matrix to represent the spacing of where all these rivet holes are going to be so then what you did I wonder what I do is you cut a strip of this stuff off and you, you've got the little marks there and using double sided tape you stick these onto the inside of where you want the embossing to start so you stick these down here and these are a target for where the embossing tool has to fit and if you turn it round that's the result we get We've done the embossing and we get this rivet effect. And this is the process I'm going through now. To sort of give you some close-ups of how this rivet embossing tool works. As I line it up on the crosshairs and just give it a gentle press down. And adjusting this little screw here will adjust the depth so you can get bigger or smaller rivet impressions. So it's quite a slow process doing this but it just adds to a little bit of uh, realism makes it look a little bit better than just a smooth finish on there and this is a slow slow job working through but this has got to be done first before we start to assemble the whole thing because all this rivet because otherwise you won't be able to get at it also what I've been doing for this plate work and it's what I mentioned in the section of the video where we went to see the real thing. Getting this part, this curve right, on this tender, on the rear part of the coal bunker, is going to be a real fiddle because it's a double curve. And that is going to be quite awkward. And I've had a thought about this a few things a few options in terms of how I'm going to tackle that and what I came up with was basically forge was basically forging some brass into the shape that I want show you there and this is a case of cutting a strip of brass just gently folding it in half at first heating it up and then using these formers, those formers represent the shape of the rear part of the bunker. Using these formers, I was able to create the shape of this round section. And it's quite a process, you bend it, heat it bend it, force it round, tap it, heat it up again, anneal the brass and you go through this process of heating, knocking it round gently, heating it again or annealing it again so it makes the brass more malleable and bendable and what you finish up with 
is the shape that we're looking for. The back end will be riveted, fixed on, and then this will be blended in to match that curve. At the moment, as you can see, there's a, well, you may not be able to see it, there's going to be a step there where obviously this rear bunker plate fits on and you've got this curve going round. Now we don't want that, or we, what we need to do is this has got to be smooth and round. So when this is riveted on, fixed into position and soldered, using filler solder I will blend a curve all the way round on here to get a smooth double curve round. And that's the process I'll be doing a little bit later on. But I just thought I'd show you that, uh, what I've been spending my time on recently, is on that shape, bend it round, turn it round, and it gives us the other shape. Now, at the moment you might think well, they look a bit ugly, a little bit crude, but I can assure you by the time I've finished with them and fitted them, you won't see the join. So that's where we are. And also I have the printout of the loco, just for a quick reference, just to see where these rivets are going. And as I mentioned, this is the process I'm going through at the moment. And I will carry on doing these and putting these other few rivets in. And then we'll be ready then. To well, you can see I've moved on since the the last pause um, and here's the tender the coal bunker area that I was talking about before and now you can see I put in the curves and I don't think they look too bad and I didn't use solder soft solder in the end because what I found is as I was trying to fill it it was starting to pool and not necessarily run the right way. So I use my good old friend the um, car filler and that's just filled in there and smoothed off and it gives us the nice round shape that we're looking for. So I've been working on that and also uh, you can see as well is I've added a little bit more detail put some handrails on here on both sides so we've we've done that put the handrails on and I've also done a similar job on the the other part of the uh, of, of the body put some handrails on here so we've got some handrails on here that we put on and say so we've got all our rivets done so that's taking shape quite nicely also I've completed the firebox cover. There's the firebox cover there. To put some bands on there, silvered some sol um, soldered some bands on here and there's a couple of little more detail to go on here. Uh, just a couple of little washout plugs just to give the effect. Uh, so that's another little job I'll have to do. So that's the, the firebox cover and you pop that onto there, that fits on there. Just give you a quick assembly just to show how it's coming along. And the other thing I found is I really had to have these cylinders back into position to get everything right, to line everything up. Um, some of the sharp eyed ones of you may have noticed that this is slightly bigger than what we started off with. That's because the first one I made was too short and the reason that didn't work out right was because I didn't have the cylinders in position which meant I didn't position the smoke box in the right place which meant I made this the wrong size. So we had to do take two and make another one. So that's in position there. And I'll just very crudely pop those on there. I'll just stick those on there for now so you can see. 
how that is all coming together. Let's drop that into position. I'll just do one side and that's part of the rear foot plate. Drop that in. Just sit the boiler in position. I've got the mounting points to fit this um, firebox cover on. And pop our smoke box on. And when we put the sides on, you can see it's actually getting there. Um, what I need to do now, I'll just put that on there just to give the effect, show you where we're up to. That sits about there. Oops, the fence, that sits about there. And there's the rear. Uh, tender come coal bunker in position as well. That fits on there. And you notice at the moment I've still not done the water tanks. I say that will fit on there as well. The water tanks, I've not done that. Uh, I've been concentrating on this on this bunker to get that right. I've also got the mounting holes to fit that into position. So that's all that's all good. That's all done. Just a couple of little jobs I need to do on here. I need to solder a little ledge on here and on there because on the real thing there's a like a little sliding sliding door that fits across here. If you remember some of the pictures of the real thing, there's like a, a door that seems to be able to slide across. Also, what I noticed is again, my original drawings showed this window as a, quite a curve came round as an arch. Well, again, looking at the real thing again, that's more like what the shape has to be. So again, my drawings weren't necessarily, again, completely accurate. So I've just altered the shape of this to represent more like the real thing. So that goes on there, like so. And you're starting to see what it's beginning to look like. Um, Say, so yeah, I'll just do that other little job on here to fix this uh, little mounting point on here for the, uh, the sliding um, piece that comes comes along there. And then I shall be able to fit the water to start up work on the water tanks and that will be the next job. And that will be in the next episode. So I hope you've liked this video. If you have, please hit the like button and hit the subscribe button as it all helps. And many thanks. And we'll see you again very soon in the next episode.